Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, Hour 3. Hello, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program, as always, text Eric, E-R-I-C-K, to 33777. Uh, This is breaking news. The Atlanta Braves have been awarded the 2025 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. It's coming to the teepee at the battery. Uh, they were specially designed for an event like this, according to the Brave Stadium, making it uh, the ideal backdrop for the Midsummer Classic. Uh, the MLB All-Star Game will join the long list of epic sporting events hosted in Atlanta in recent years, including the Super Bowl, MLS All-Star Game, college football playoff national championships, and more. There you have it. They should allow uh, actual Governor Brian Kemp to throw out the first pitch after uh, yanking the All-Star game as a way to embarrass him and help purported Governor Stacey Abrams way back when. I don't know that they will, but they really should um, as the ultimate apology. Now, before I move on, Pierce has been waiting, relevant to the border stuff. I want to take his phone call before I move on to anything else. Pierce, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Eric. How are you doing this afternoon? Great. Well, you know, you were talking about the invasion and the southern border. Everybody's talking about it, but we got a real problem on the northern border because Canadians. I have a friend, yeah, a Canadian border. I got a friend that uh, was on a Zoom call, and one of the members of the folks on the call with her lives in either Maine or, Nor- or Vermont or New Hampshire, but their actual private property is ends at the Canadian border. And they have, you know, they got trail cameras for wildlife watching and security cameras. And a security camera went off, and she looked at, and it was four Asian men coming across her backyard. And she called the Border Patrol. They came out. They, they took the video that she had, and, um, and he said, oh, this is, this is getting to be a real problem. And she said, what do you mean? He said, he said we're probably only catching between 35 and 45 percent of the ones coming across. He said, and that's not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem are all the legal Chinese who just fly into Canada, get a rental car with some friends, come into the U.S. to as tourists, and never leave. Mm -hmm. He said, we have a real problem with dining, and most of these are males of military age. Now, there are people listening, Pierce, who are like, eh, this sounds like one of those games where somebody heard something, who heard something from somebody, and and it maybe it happened, those Internet rumors, but this is from November 2nd. Of 2023, yeah. so just two weeks ago, in the New York Post, the number of Chinese migrants entering the United States at the border has reached an all-time high, sparking national security concerns. Customs and Border mm-hmm. Patrol officials apprehended 24,048 Chinese citizens at the border with Mexico over the 2023 fiscal year ending September, more than 12 times the 1,970 arrests of the previous year. That's a 7,000% increase at the southern border. It is also happening at the northern border with Canada. Congressman Mark Green of Tennessee, chair of the House Homeland Security Committee, sounded the alarm claiming the majority are military-age men with known ties to the People's Liberation Army who are coming across. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I mean, it's, you know, we we got so much focus at the South and the and the, the longest border in the world that doesn't have Security. unprotected is, the, is ours. Yep. And like I said, these guys can, a lot of them are flying into Canada, meeting up with people, coming across the border with their, uh, passports, oh, we're just going to go to New York City or we're going here, going there. And they go to these large areas that have a large Chinese population and they're just 
disappearing in the communities. They are. It, no, it, it, Pierce, and before makes, we get off here, I'll tell you, I, I it was um, it was Ron DeSantis. No, no, no. It was Ken Cuccinelli, who used to be in charge of uh, border security right? for President Trump, who was telling me at our gathering back in August that on more than one occasion, mm. uh, Chinese nationals bought high-speed racing boats in the Bahamas and raced them to the United States ran up on shore, jumped out of the boats, and disappeared into the night. Custom, the boats were so fast, Customs and Border Patrol couldn't respond in time. They've caught oh, some, yeah. but some of them are doing it. He says, and, and when they trace the boats, they've been bought by Chinese nationals in the Bahamas. Yep. And, you know, it, it, there's something that really – I just got to share. I'm, I know you're a man of faith, and I am too. But there was a we have prayer, we have a prayer meeting at our church every Thursday night. And two weeks ago, when as I was leaving the prayer meeting, I feel like God put a thought in my heart, and it really troubled me, because he the thought that hit me was if we don't a nation doesn't if our nation doesn't repent as they did in Nineveh, we will be overthrown. And then I hear these reports, and I'm like, oh my gosh, look, oh I, my gosh, we we got we've got a group of people in Washington on both sides of the aisle. Pierce, thanks, and I'm going to let you go there. Thank you, uh, who are paying attention to this issue finally mike gallagher of wisconsin leading the charge but there's a lot of people on both sides of the aisle in washington who are just totally ignoring it it's a serious issue but you know you have a media that also downplays this sort of stuff Uh, uh, so much of our media is on the side of the bad guys frankly um i don't know if y'all heard this Uh, i didn't ask charlie to get this let me let me pull it off of twitter so gail king on CBS News was interviewing a man, Thomas Hand. His daughter is being held by Hamas. Listen to what Gail King says to this. This man's daughter is being held by terrorists who kidnapped her out of Israel. But now this seems to be all about politics. What do you say about that? You know, you have innocent children and Palestinians who are dying, innocent Israeli children who are dying. And no one seems to be able to say enough, stop that. (sighs) I'm not interested in politics at all. Uh, My only concern is getting Emily back. Yeah, I, I... This is the man, by the way, that I, if, if he sounds familiar to you, he's the Irishman who weeks ago was interviewed by CNN and uh, was hoping that his daughter was dead. He was hoping his daughter was dead because of what they would do to her if she stayed alive. His only comfort was reports that his daughter was dead because of what Hamas would do to his daughter if she was alive. And then it turned out it wasn't his daughter who was dead, and his nightmare began. And Gail King wants to ask this man whose daughter is a hostage of Hamas, what about the politics of it? You know, Palestinian kids are dying as well. You know those Palestinian kids would not be dead or dying had Hamas not done what it did. I didn't play this audio for you yesterday, but but you know what? I'm going to play this audio for you now. Um, nope. Uh, ah, I thought I thought I, uh, I thought I had the audio, and that's why I didn't play it for you yesterday. I, I, I thought I asked Charlie to get it, and, and I don't see it in the file. But that's uh, it was in Arabic. I was going to talk over, it, but so literally, you have this situation yesterday where um, an Al Jazeera reporter is talking to a Palestinian in the hospital in Gaza. And the man is outraged about what's happening in the hospital. And then he turns his outrage on Hamas. And he says, if these these criminals don't have to work here, they don't have to use this as their base. And it's these criminals who have brought the Israelis here. It's it's criminal what these dogs are doing. And the reporter freaks out and turns away and tries to get away from the guy because the guy is attacking Hamas on Al Jazeera. And he's a Palestinian guy. And the reporter's like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. It was incredible to watch the scene unfold. No, you couldn't understand it, but the the transcript, it's, it's from memory. It, it, it showed the man blasting 
Hamas and the the Al Jazeera reporter freaking out. Now you have Gail King lecturing. This man's daughter is in a tunnel in Gaza being held by Hamas. We don't know if she's alive or dead. And Gail King's like, well, what about the politics of it? I mean, innocent Palestinian children are dying as well. But they wouldn't be dead had Hamas not done what it did. And then you have Sally Busby. Increasingly, the Washington Post, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm done being nice about the Washington Post. It is a tool of Hamas at this point. And Sally Busby is the leader. Today, Sally Busby, the editor of the Washington Post, has a story examining the role of AR-15s. Let me read you part of this. The Washington Post is taking the unusual step of publishing photographs and videos taken during the immediate aftermaths of some of the nation's deadliest mass shootings. Like other news organizations, we cover the effects of these tragedies. But because journalists generally do not have access to crime scenes and news organizations rarely, if ever, publish graphic content, most Americans have no way to understand the full scope of an AR-15's destructive power or the extent of the trauma inflicted on victims, survivors, and first responders. So they decided to publish the graphic pictures of the AR-15 videos to distract people from the graphic videos of what's coming out of Israel. Sally Busby is the editor of the Washington Post who pulled down, yanked down a cartoon that showed Hamas using children as human shields because people in the newsroom were upset by it. This is what she wrote at the time. Dear colleagues, given the many deep concerns and conversations today in our newsroom, I wanted to ensure everyone saw the notes sent out tonight by the Post's opinion editor, David Shipley, to Post readers and to his staff and opinions. My best, Sally. This woman literally ordered a cartoon to be taken down because it showed Hamas using children as human shields and yet prides herself in publishing graphic photos of dead Americans to heighten our sensitivities on the AR-15, but won't publish the graphic nature of what Hamas did to Israel. Isn't it fascinating? She wants to move us to gun control at a time Chinese nationals are sneaking into this country. We got Hezbollah operatives we know in this country. Hamas is doing what it's doing. You got the American media on the side of the terrorists. You know, last night, violent protesters tried to storm the Democratic National Committee. Police in riot gear had to keep them from breaking down the door. Sally Busby's Washington Post refused to cover it. Two days ago, there was a massive pro-Israel rally on the Washington National Mall. Yesterday, the Washington Post buried it in the metro section. They didn't put it on the front page. But do you know what they did put on the front page? The anti-Israel protests from a month ago. They were willing to tout those and show strong condemnation of Israel's attacks on the innocent people of Gaza. The Washington Post has run Gaza Health Ministry death tolls as if it's a legitimate news source without immediately advising people that it's a propaganda organ of Hamas. Sally Busby's in charge of this. She's Hamas's gal at the Washington Post. You got Larry Fink as a stooge of the Chinese. You got Jeff Bezos as a stooge of Hamas. You have an American media operation led by, owned by Jeff Bezos, led by Sally Busby, pushing the Hamas party line. We have people and institutions in this country who they're not deeply unserious. They're actually very seriously malicious against the interests of this country. They have imbibed wokeism, and it has poisoned them against this country. And they're spreading from college campuses into the newsrooms and industries of America. And you should be advised it's happening. Guys, if you're a small, mid-sized business, you're struggling with HR issues, you have employees not showing up, or you got to do a termination, you need onboarding of employees, maybe there's a sexual harassment complaint, you want an HR manager. You don't want to be the bad guy with your employees. Bambi can play the role of HR for you. $99 a month, available by phone, email, real-time chat. They do onboardings, terminations. They help your team members get to peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations regardless of which state. They're great. Now, they're U.S.-based. They, you got somebody to talk to who's dedicated to your team. 
They give you access to HR expertise and they add personal touches. So even though they're outsourced by your company, they really feel like they're a part of your team. That matters. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast. When you sign up, it'll help my show. Bambi.com, B-A-M-B-E-E.com, Bambi.com, Eric Erickson in the podcast tab. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I see online the great debate of when to put up the Christmas tree has begun. I I think the actual question is when should you take it down? You know, shut up, Charlie. Shut up. I I I I I know you're about to say something snarky about it. You and Philip both, y'all are gonna be fired by the end of the show. There are 12 days of Christmas, people, and the 12th day is not December 25th. That's the first day of Christmas. You should be keeping your Christmas tree up until January 6th every year. That's Epiphany. That's when you take down your Christmas tree. The night of January 5th, you turn off the lights and you take the tree down on January 6th. You turn off the lights at sundown January 5th, so you're ready for Epiphany on January 6th, and God doesn't smite you because you've got your lights off. It's bad luck to leave your lights up on after after January January 5th on Sunday. But you keep the tree up until January 6th, and then you take it down. There are 12 days of Christmas, and you actually count it by sundown on the 24th on Christmas Eve. That's when it begins, and you turn them off on January 5th, and Epiphany is January 6th, and that's what you do. All God-fearing people do it that way. We got a lady in our neighborhood. Thank God I'm not on the radio down in Macon right now because she'd be listening. She may be listening. You know I love you. But all of her decorations are gone by sundown on Christmas Day. I was like, I want the joy of the Christmas decoration. Now, she puts them up on Thanksgiving Day, like feeds the family Thanksgiving night. The house has the Christmas decoration. I think that's fantastic. We will have our lights up the day after Thanksgiving. We won't have it on Thanksgiving because we'll be out of town. But the next day we come back, by God, I'll have my Christmas decorations up slowly over that week. Take a little while to get the tree. Tree is very big. I don't put them up for Thanksgiving. I'm starting to see them up around the town. I don't mind. I was ready to put my Christmas stuff up on Halloween. I didn't even, we didn't even decorate for Halloween this year. It's gotten just too creepy pagan. I was, I would have had up my Christmas tree, but my wife would have shot me. My wife literally would have murdered me. One year, I didn't take the Christmas decorations down until February. Now, we didn't leave them up. I mean, we didn't leave stuff turned on. I was just very busy with my job. And my mother-in-law had to come help my wife take them down. And ever since, she's like opposed to be decorated at all. I was like, I I could use some help, but I don't get any. But I decorate for Christmas, people. I decorate the snot out of, I mean, I got the inflatable bear who beats the drum that he's holding. I've got the the giant nutcrackers that give all men everywhere the heebie-jeebies. I, I got lights. I got garland. I got a 12-foot tall Christmas tree, reaches all the way to my ceiling. I got it all for Christmas. And I say, you leave it up and you love it. The joy of the lights at Christmas time. I don't understand these people who they, no, if it's a live tree, yeah, put it up on Christmas Eve and take it down on Christmas Day so you don't burn down your house. But for everybody else, put it up. But you remember there are 12 days of Christmas, and the 12th day begins at sundown on January 5th. So you leave the, you leave your stuff up proudly. I mean, I, I was raised this way. I, I was flabbergasted to learn that people take their stuff down like the day after Christmas. No, the, there are 12 days of Christmas, the most annoying Christmas song ever, but it's true. There are 12 days. Leave your tree up until January 6th. Now, recently, 10 regional banks have had their credit downgraded. No problem. They're going to keep racking up profits, as you know. The government's going to give them a sweetheart deal. The government's going to bail them out. Don't tell me I was raised wrong. Huh. No wonder Swiss America been sounding the alarm about the secret war on cash. The all-out assault on freedom. Interest rates are soaring. Banks are teetering on collapse. Swiss America can help you 
educate you about how to protect your hard-earned assets right now. Get their report, The Secret War on Cash. Your copy's free. All you got to do is call or text my name, Eric Erickson, to 800-289-2646. That's 800-289-2646. You can also go to SwissAmerica.com slash Eric, E-R-I-C-K, or just call or text my name. Yeah, you can text it to 800-289-2646. Message and data rates may apply. Get the secret war on cash. The report is free to you from Swiss America. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. (gasps) No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson here getting my tomahawk chop warmed up for the Major League All-Star game in Atlanta next year. Yes, indeed. Make sure you get over that tennis elbow and tendonitis. <laughs> I want to play for you a couple of pieces of audio. One, this is from the NBC newscast last night. Chrissy Romans was at CNN. She just jumped ship. She's at NBC. I want you to listen to this. Prices have not changed much over the past few months, but they're still up more than 3% from last year. Bottom line, you're still paying more, but consumer prices are increasing at a slower rate than we've been seeing. Let's bask in the good news for a minute. Remember yeah. when it was 9% the inflation mm-hmm. rate? I mean, that was terrifying, and that was that was issue number one for American families. So 3.2%, that's better than it was in September. That means prices are rising more slowly. It's still rising faster than the Fed would want, mm-hmm. still faster than American families would want, but that is a slowdown in the inflation rate. Used car prices fell last month. Airfares fell last oh. month. Gas prices fell last month. And rents and, you know, shelter costs grew more slowly. So all of that was the good news. That's why the Dow Jones Industrial Average had a very good day very yesterday. Good day. Mm-hmm. But you know, most people care about the grocery bill, not the yeah. Dow, right? And so we're still worried about overall prices still a little bit too high. Yeah. I'll be the negative, Nelly. Grocery prices yeah. are still high, and that's yeah. what most people feel. The prices are still higher. The level of mm-hmm. prices has gone up the past two or three years. So when you go to the grocery store, you still feel like, you know, grocery prices, four of the six categories that this CPI measures were higher in the most recent month. So people feel that the grocery bill today is higher than it was two years ago. And I think that's why the opinion polls show every time I say, guys, the economy is doing okay. You know, the public says it doesn't feel that way. It really doesn't feel that way. And I think grocery bills are a big part of that. You mentioned. Um, <laughs> okay. So it's, Hey guys, Hey guys, the economy is actually doing okay. You're, you, I know you don't feel it, but start feeling it. Feel good guys. Feel good. Meanwhile, there's this over at MSNBC on Morning Joe, the Suley guys. Well, that's such an important point, Rev, that, that Anand makes, which is, first of all, the reason that Mar- Marjorie Taylor Greene and others like her behave this way, it's not an accident, it's because there's a reward for it. It's because she's going to get reelected with 80% of the vote or whoever it's going to be in her district. So the voters want that, at least in her case. And on the question of the story, it does appear the White House and the Biden campaign has started to get that, that you can't just run and say, well, Unemployment's at historic lows. The GDP number was good this month. Inflation is coming down. You have to start to tell the story of democracy versus fascism, which is where the stakes will be next year. And you have to connect that argument to people. I think that's what Anand is saying, because the the most effective way the Democrats can do this is to say, yes, the noise is justified, and this is what we're Mm -hmm. doing because we were the noisemakers. You got that? You, you, You got that? authoritarianism and democracy they'll be on the ballot next year as if it's a you know so here's here's the dirty little secret it doesn't matter let let's say let's say republican voters decide just hypothetical just follow along with me here don't get mad don't at me republican voters decide you know what we're going to vote for Nikki Haley We're going to vote for Nikki Haley. She wins in Iowa. She beats out DeSantis and Trump, rebounds into New Hampshire. She consolidates the base there, goes to South Carolina. She beats Trump in South Carolina. In the Nevada caucuses, Trump wins, but then it sweeps through Super Tuesday, and it's Nikki Haley. She consolidates the winner-take-all states. Nikki Haley becomes the Republican nominee. 
2024. The headlines in the papers will be Nikki Haley presided over a state that kept the Confederate battle flag on state house grounds. Only after a mass murderer killed black people did Haley summon the courage to do the right thing reluctantly. Nikki Haley worked for Donald Trump. She's just a smarter version of Donald Trump. Nikki Haley's an authoritarian American tyrant who's not even a real American. Her family's from India. Have you heard what's happening in India? Nikki Haley, she's from South Carolina, and though non-white decided that she needed to act like a white person and embrace the white nationalism of Southern white Confederate Republicans and worked for Donald Trump, authoritarianism is on the ballot. Vote Biden for liberty and freedom and forgetting what else comes next. You know what's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. It doesn't matter who the Republicans are. And that is one reason there are a lot of Republicans who have locked in for Donald Trump because they're like, it's going to happen to any of them. Might as well go with that guy. It's it's one of the reasons. Because it, it just, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter what who it is. I mean, you've already got them out there saying Ron DeSantis is actually worse than Trump because he's more effective than Trump. Ron DeSantis actually got the stuff done. Trump said he was going to get done. Ron DeSantis is more dangerous, better Trump than him. Back in 2015, remember, it was a lot of liberals saying, oh, my gosh, I hope they nominate Trump. Hillary Clinton's team actually ran ads to bolster Donald Trump in the Republican primary, got him, and lost to him. They still can't believe they lost to the guy. It had to be the Russians. This conversation about authoritarianism is on the map. The Democrats have a real problem. The Fox News poll. Fox News has polling out. Nikki Haley trounces every Democrat more handily than any other Republican. Ron DeSantis comes in after Haley, trounces every, uh, trounces every Democrat. But so does Donald Trump. It's closer. Instead of 59-41, it's 51-49, but that's still a majority vote for Trump in the polling. Yeah, Haley's at 59, Biden at 41, but Trump is at 51, Biden's at 49. Look, look, it's still a win. DeSantis is like 52, 53. All the Republicans win, and, and they put up Trump's name against them all. Trump against Gavin Newsom, Trump wins. Trump against Biden, Trump wins. Trump against Kamala Harris, Trump wins. Trump against Gretchen Whitmer, Trump wins. Trump against Joe Manchin, Trump wins. Three-way race, Trump, Biden, Kennedy, Trump wins. Four-way race, Trump, Manchin, Biden, Kennedy, Trump wins. Trump wins, Trump wins. Nikki Haley does better, Ron DeSantis does better, but Trump wins for now, right now. And that's the Democrats' consolation is, oh, we're a year from the the election. Joe Biden's going to have an incumbency advantage. It's true. This is something Republicans can't ignore, but Democrats can't ignore that Joe Biden loses to every Republican, some more than others, but also to Trump. So the best the Democrats can do is what worked in 2022 to minimize the damage, abortion and authoritarianism. The problem is on Trump, he's come out pretty vocally and alienated pro-lifers saying, oh, abortion's a losing issue, ditch it. So good luck. Going after him on that. Y'all? Um, this isn't this this isn't a good thing that the media is doing because of this. A free people really do need a free press. You, you actually, it's a symbiotic relationship. In There have been plenty of academic studies, outside think tank studies and the like. I've got a friend who's on the board of a foundation that that supports local newspapers. And when I mean local newspapers, I'm talking like your county newspaper. County newspapers, by the way, tend to lean to the right. Most counties around the country have a local county-owned operated – well, it's not county-owned. It's it's owned by someone who lives in the county, publishes. They tend to be conservatives. It's it's the regional newspapers – 
the multi-city re- pe- papers where they start to go left, but the local papers, they tend to they tend to be conservatives. They're making money off ads congratulating the grandkids on getting the 4-H award or being the, the Future Farmers of America award recipient, stuff like that. And all of these studies, it doesn't matter who's done them, all of them have shown that when a local newspaper goes away, local political corruption increases. The areas with the strongest local newspaper and reporting publications tend to have the least corruption. A free people need a free press to ask the tough questions and get the word out to everyone else. It's not a coincidence. What what happens in, in tyrannies? The first thing they do is they take your guns away. The second thing they do is they shut down the papers that don't tow the party line. So we need a free press. The problem in this country is we don't have a free press. Oh, if you listen to reporters, they talk grand and glorious things about the First Amendment and how we have a free press, but we don't have a free press. The press of the United States is held hostage by their hatred of the right. The press in this country is captive to its own hatred of those not like them, and that's not a free press. They hate Republicans. They hate Trump supporters. They hate conservatives. They hate Christians. They belittle them. you got Rolling Stone attacking the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, because Mike Johnson said in a prayer group a while back on the floor of the House that he prayed that God would not destroy this country, that this nation has been led astray, and prays that God gives us another chance to come back lest he destroy us. Like, how how could you believe that this country's been led astray and is going to be destroyed by God? Have you not met an evangelical Christian? No, no one at Rolling Stone ever has. These people hate you and your values. They are held captive by them. It's not a free press. And that's my concern here is when the press goes after all the, the oh, the authoritarianism of the right, it's so bad. Have you not seen the pro-Hamas progressives trying to storm the DNC? They weren't trying to storm the Republican Party. They were trying to storm the Democratic National Committee because they believe the DNC should be on their side. It was like the three dudes who showed up at my house in 2016 to threaten my family because I wasn't back in Trump. They showed up not because they were on the other side, but because they thought I should be on their side and were coming calling to correct me and get me on the same page or else. People are always more hostile to the people they presume should be on their side and are not than to the other side. We need a free press and we don't have one. And as they chime in on abortion and they chime in on authoritarianism, I don't know that that translates in 2024. If crime and the economy are on the ballot and the GOP stays on message on those things, I think I think that helps them. Look at Virginia. The left is like rushing out to say, oh, Virginia was a loss for the GOP. And, and what do they do? They focus on abortion and, and abortion wins for the Democrats and abortion saved the Democrats on Virginia. I can't believe the Republicans floated a 15-week compromise. The GOP actually did way better than I originally thought in Virginia. They picked up a seat in the Senate. And yes, they lost the House by four seats, but they gained it by seven seats last time. And the seats they lost were seats that Joe Biden won or more than 10% of the vote. Put it to you this way. The Republicans in Virginia did so well that every area of the state where Joe Biden got nine percentage points more than Donald Trump, the GOP still won. Abortion did not kill the GOP. Redistricting did. And barely. The 15-week compromise actually worked. I dare the Democrats to make the election about abortion next year and see what happens. They've misinterpreted their own results because in their hostility and hatred of the right, they genuinely misinterpret things. They get it wrong. But they're going to scream about authoritarianism. They're going to scream about Donald Trump. And it doesn't matter who the GOP nominee is. They're going to be a right-wing authoritarian who's going to destroy the government tear up the bureaucracy, fire people. Good, they should. They should. It's a bunch of progressives embedded in government. They need to be purged. We need to have the purge, not not killing people, just firing them from the government and reboot the, the, the bureaucracy that has taken on a level of progressive arrogance against the rest of us. But the Democrats and their friends in the press, all of one accord, 
will complain and bellyache it about the whole time. You can and should ignore them. Don't ignore me on this, though. Right now, you can get the Eden Pure Thunderstorm 3-pack for less than $200. Now, this is important because if you got stinky odors, the Eden Pure Thunderstorm can eliminate those odors. Wipe them out. Smoke odors, litter box odors, pet odors, cooking odors, musty odors. It traps the mold, the pollen, the mildew, the dust that's floating in the air. And the Eden Pure Thunderstorm, it works to eliminate bad odors. All you have to do is go to EdenPureDeals.com edenpuredeals.com. You can get three of them for less than $200 by using my name as your discount code. On the front page of the website, edenpuredeals.com, you'll see a discount code box. Put in your radio show's name. It says something like that. You put in Eric, E-R-I-C-K, and it takes you to the three-pack deal, edenpuredeals.com. The discount code, Eric, you get three of them for less than $200, one for upstairs, downstairs, your basement, your RV, your travel bag. You can hold it in your hand. It's small. It's portable. I travel with them. EdenPureDeals.com. The discount code, my name, Eric, E-R-I-C-K. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Breaking news. Uh, what's his name? DePappy has been convicted in federal court of one count of assault on the immediate family member of a federal official, a second count of a, and a second count of attempted kidnapping of a federal official. He could face 30 years uh, for the first and 20 years for the second, uh, which is interesting. I wasn't sure. You know, I mentioned yesterday they were trying to do this whole he lived in this alternate reality conspiracy where kidnapping Nancy Pelosi because she's a member of Congress wasn't relevant. It was because she's part of a QAnon conspiracy. Jury didn't buy it. He has been found guilty. Breaking news. The attacker on Paul Pelosi has been found guilty of uh, assault of an immediate family member of Congress and an uh, attempted kidnapping of a federal official. Now, I also got to say there is some other breaking news out there. Uh, George Santos appears on the fast track to being expelled from Congress. Uh, a number of people, there was a, a vote a couple of weeks ago to expel him, and a number of members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, refused to vote to expel him. And the reason both sides used is because there was a pending House, eth- House ethics investigation, and a number of Republicans and Democrats both said, hey, we need to wait for the House Ethics Committee to finish its investigation. Well, they have. Uh, and they said that it is highly likely DeSantis or DeSantis, De, 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 what is it, George Santos, Santos, not DeSantos, Santos, George Santos uh, was a fraudulent huckster who lied and did all sorts of criminal law breaking. And so they will purge him from Congress probably the week after Thanksgiving. They're going to go on and file the motion. It takes some time to do and Santos will be gone. So it'll make the Republicans have a three seat majority in the House of Representatives. Uh, which is interesting, but yeah, it's, it's the House Ethics Committee bipartisan basis says dude is is more likely than not guilty of crimes, and so they're going to throw him out of the House of Representatives in two weeks. There are now enough votes to do so. Good riddance. What a creepy dude. All right, finally, I have a personal request. Prayer. At 4 o'clock today, my kid finds out if she got into her first choice for college. Happens to be my alma mater, Mercy University. Now, here's her thinking. Her admissions advisor called her the other day and invited her this Saturday to come hear what it's like to live in the dorms and whatnot. We're in our, th- I mean, smart kids. She's thinking, why would they call and invite me to something like that if I if I found out on Thursday I wasn't getting in? I, I'm thinking she, she's, she's got some, some sense in this. But prayers are greatly appreciated that she gets accepted into her college because She's texting me right now listing. Can you imagine what would happen if she didn't get in the meltdown this afternoon? <laughs> so yes, um that that would be that would be cool. Um and also I got to say at the end, um I mentioned yesterday Emory University Healthcare and the problems that people were having with scheduling and stuff. Uh God bless them. They heard me and they reached out to my wife on her situation, and, and it wasn't to blow them up, but I just don't – I sometimes can use this microphone for good. And there were lots of other people besides my wife having problems, and it looks like 
uh, it worked, and they're looking into them to fix the situation. And so God bless them for being as responsive as they have been to that situation. It's just it's it's been a frustration to for my wife. Uh, the scans were good, but she couldn't make the appointment with the doctor today because all the scheduling stuff. And Emory, they're on it. They're fixing it. God bless them for listening and, and, and taking it seriously. Good for them. All right. I'll be back with you guys for Open Line Friday tomorrow. Have a great rest of the day. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.